Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Today, we've got part three of our VRM thermal testing, and this latest update includes basically every board that we're yet to test. There are some ASRock boards missing, such as the B550 Phantom Gaming 4 and B550 PG Velocita, but I have tested boards from ASRock with the exact same VRM configuration, so we will have a good idea of how those missing boards perform. I also wasn't keen to waste any more Patreon money on ASRock B550 motherboards. We've already spent over $2,000 on ASRock boards for this roundup. So I don't need to go buying boards that share the same VRM design. On that note, a big shout out to our Patreon members for making testing like this possible, even when manufacturers like ASRock blacklist us for creating honest content. They didn't appreciate us calling them out in our Z490 VRM thermal testing, where we basically, well, we called out their lies, where they claimed that their entry level boards were excellent overclockers, when they couldn't even run the CPU stock. On hand for testing this time, we have more B550 motherboards priced from $180 right up to $300 US. Uh, given we've got so many boards to go over this time, I'm going to skip most of the usual details where we talk about USB ports and all the other board features, and instead we'll jump right into the VRM design and cooling, and then of course we'll take a look at the results. Starting with the ASUS ROG Strix B550F Gaming, this board comes in at $190 US or $210 for the Wi-Fi 6 model, and in terms of VRM design, we find a very fat 4-phase V-Core. From the PWM controller, ASUS are taking just four signals, each driven by three Vache SIC 63950 amp power stages into three inductors. This means while there are just four phases, the board actually packs a dozen 50 amp power stages. Now, if this design looks familiar to you, that's probably because it's copied over from the ASUS Tough Gaming X570 Plus, one of the best value X570 boards on the market. So we already know that this design works well, though it is worth noting that the X570 version without Wi-Fi costs just $175 US. So at $190, the ROG Strix B550F Gaming might be a bit of a tough sell, especially given that it really only offers 2.5 gigabit LAN as an extra. The ASUS ROG Strix B550 eGaming appears to be a huge step up in terms of current handling capabilities, but in reality it only features two extra power stages, though they are rated at 70 amps. For this board, ASUS is using the ASP2006 controller, and from it, seven signals are fed into a pair of MP8699 270 amp power stages. When compared to the F Gaming Wi-Fi, the eGaming is much more expensive, jumping up from $210 US to $280 US, and frankly, not quite sure how ASUS is justifying that price premium as the feature sets are much the same. Although the B550E and F Gaming use a different VRM configuration, ASUS has gone with the same cooling design for both boards. The black heat sinks cool not just the power stages, but also the inductors, which should help lower PCB temperatures, providing there's enough airflow over the heat sinks. The Gigabyte B550 Aorus Pro looks to be a great value board at $180 US. Included is a 12-phase V-Core VRM using a dozen Vache SIC651C 50 amp power stages. This is a double design using ISL6617A phase doublers, so just six signals are taken from the PWM controller. Gigabyte's also gone the extra mile in the cooling department by including a real finned heatsink, and this is found over the left bank of power stages. The top row features a solid aluminium block, but both are connected using a direct touch copper heat pipe. They've also used high quality thermal pads, and although the same VRM components can be found on the cheaper B550 Aorus Elite, the layout is different, and this does make a very big difference, something we'll discuss a little bit later on in the video. Moving on, the Gigabyte B550 Vision D shares the same VRM design and configuration as the B550 Aorus Pro, though it loses the real finned heatsink, replacing it with just a giant slab of aluminium. The good news though being that both heat sinks are connected using a direct touch copper heat pipe and the same high quality thermal pads have also been used, so cooling performance should still be very good. In terms of price, the Vision D is expensive at $260 US, but it also includes basically every feature possible. That said, it is a little bit light on SATA ports, and for some reason it has two gigabit LAN connections. That means there's no 2.5 gigabit LAN or better, and for me personally, that is quite disappointing. But if you like USB ports, this board will be worth checking out. 
The Gigabyte B550 Aorus Master is also loaded with USB ports, but it comes with a 2.5 gigabit LAN connection, as well as Wi-Fi 6 support. It also comes with the biggest VRM of any B550 motherboard, using an Infineon 16-phase controller, so no need for doublers here. For the V-Core portion, we have 14 Infineon TDA 2147-270 amp power stages, which is incredible, but the board also does cost $280 US. That said, the equivalent X570 motherboard does cost $700 US, so maybe it's not that bad after all. At this point, the cooling doesn't really matter, but Gigabyte still go on with the best setup possible here by including two banks of real finned heat sinks, connected using a copper heat pipe. So the Gigabyte B550 Aorus Master really is a beast, but it also costs more than most X570 boards. The MSI B550 Tomahawk comes in at just $180 US and features one of the best VRMs in this price point. Basically, we're getting the same VRM design as the X570 Tomahawk minus a single phase, leaving us with a five phase V-Core, each packing two ISL9936060 amp power stages feeding into a pair of inductors. MSI is using the same heatsink that we've seen on a number of their new motherboards now, though it has been tailored to fit the B550 Tomahawk. Truth be told, there's nothing really special about the design, it's just big and therefore takes a long time to heat soak. Now for $10 more than the Tomahawk, we find the MSI B550 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi at $190, and it features the exact same 5-phase V-Core VRM with similar cooling. I prefer the look of this heatsink, it has a few more fins cut into it, so that should help improve cooling performance. Other than that, the only other noteworthy change is the removal of the Gigabit LAN. It still has 2.5 Gigabit LAN, but replacing the Gigabit connection is Wi-Fi 6, and that is a much better option in my opinion. The current flagship B550 board from MSI is the Gaming Carbon Wi-Fi, which costs $220 US, and in terms of board features, really isn't that much different to the Gaming Edge Wi-Fi. The only real upgrade here has been made to the VRM, which now features a 12-phase V-Core using an IR35201 controller and half a dozen IR3599 phase doublers. Each phase doubler drives a pair of Infineon TDA2146260 amp power stages, each of which feeds into a dedicated inductor. The heatsink is very similar to what we find on the Gaming Edge Wi-Fi, and therefore you might expect the board to perform better in terms of VRM thermals, and if that is the case, you're going to find the results very interesting. Moving on to ASRock, and at $185 US we find the B550 Extreme 4, which uses the exact same VRM as the B550 Steel Legend. In fact, it's the very same board, but with a different colour theme. So yeah, that's a thing. There's also the B550 PG Velocita, which is also basically the same board. It costs $220 US. The cooling is slightly improved, but other than that, I'm not really sure what's different. Anyway, the Extreme 4 and its many clones all use the Renesas controller, and from it they take six signals, which are then doubled using ISL 6617A phase doublers. Each phase features its own Vichet SIC 65450 amp power stage that feeds into its own dedicated inductor. The cooling isn't particularly good here, both heat sinks aren't very big, they're mostly just a block of aluminium, and one of them is actually covered almost entirely by plastic, so that's far from optimal. And last we have the unique, rather impressive looking ASRock B550 Tai Chi, which comes in at $300 US, making it more expensive than even the Gigabyte B550 Aorus Master. Like the Aorus Master, it packs a 14 phase V-Core, though it does so using doublers. Also, whereas Gigabyte used 70 amp power stages, ASRock's gone with cheaper 50 amp models. Still, the VRM should be overkill for even the Ryzen 9 3950X, which is good as the cooling isn't anything special as we found on the Extreme 4. Again, ASRock's just gone with two blocks of aluminium, one which is again covered in plastic, but at least this time they are connected using a heat pipe. Before we get to the graphs, let's talk about the test conditions. For this testing and any future AM4 VRM thermal testing, I've built a dedicated system with the help of Corsair, who sent over their Obsidian Series 500D mid-tower case, RM850X power supply, IQ H150i RGB Pro XT all-in-one liquid cooler, and 32 gigabytes of their Vengeance RGB Pro DDR4-3200 memory. The Obsidian 500D has been configured with a single rear 120mm exhaust fan and then two top mounted 140mm exhaust fans. Then in the front of the case we have the H150i 360mm radiator with three 120mm intake fans. This is a pretty standard configuration, at least for a higher end system. Uh, the airflow is good 
And in a 21 degree room, I'd say this is an optimal setup. For recording temperatures, I'm using a digital thermometer with K-type thermocouples, and I'll be reporting the peak rear PCB temperature. Finally, I'm not reporting delta T over ambient, instead I maintain a room temperature of 21 degrees, and to ensure a consistent ambient temperature, a thermocouple is positioned next to the test system. Now, for this testing, we have four configurations using three different Ryzen processors. The base configuration, which every board should pass with ease, sees us use the Ryzen 7 3700X. It's a low powered part that only draws about 85 to 90 watts in our blender stress test. Then we have the Ryzen 9 3900X, which will be tested completely stock, no overclocking for that part, and no changes made to the BIOS other than loading XMP. And I should note that all motherboards have been tested with the latest available BIOS at the time of testing. The 3900X configuration pushes CPU load up to 140 watts in our test. Then we have the Ryzen 9 3950X, which has been tested twice, once stock and then once with a 4.3 gigahertz overclock using 1.375 volts. The stock configuration again only pushes CPU usage to around 140 watts, but it does so at a lower stock voltage. So we are pulling slightly more amperage, which will put a little bit more load on the motherboard's VRM. Finally, the 4.3 gigahertz configuration pushes CPU power consumption right up to 200 watts, so this is our most extreme test. So to summarize, all testing has been conducted in a well-ventilated case in a 21 degree room, so I consider these conditions to be best case. Surprise, surprise, these high-end B550 boards handle the Ryzen 7 3700X without breaking a sweat, just like every other B550 board we've tested to date. The only noteworthy result here is the B550 Gaming Carbon Wi-Fi, and that's right, MSI's flagship B550 board actually ran the hottest with the 3700X hitting 41 degrees. Certainly not a bad result overall, but also quite puzzling given that the Gaming Edge Wi-Fi peaked at just 34 degrees, and no, that result is not a mistake. I'll explain more as we move through the results. Stepping up to the 3900X sees all boards still pass our hour-long stress test with ease, and the gaming carbon Wi-Fi looks a bit better here, though it is still quite a bit hotter than the cheaper gaming edge Wi-Fi. Most boards ran between 45 to 47 degrees, but it was the Aorus Master that again delivered the absolute best result, peaking at just 37 degrees. Now, with the 3950X installed, we're seeing peak operating temperatures reach 50 degrees with the Gigabyte B550 Vision D and MSI B550 Gaming Carbon Wi-Fi. This time, the majority of the boards tested ran between 47 and 49 degrees, and the standouts were, again, the MSI B550 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi and Gigabyte B550 Aorus Master. Overclocking the 3950X to 4.3 GHz using 1.375 volts pushes the package power up to 200 watts, and here almost all of the boards ran between 58 and 62 degrees, so a very tight grouping and great results all around really. The Gigabyte B550 Aorus Master once again proved that its VRM is extreme overkill, running at just 46 degrees, an incredible result under these conditions. Now, here's a look at all 24 B550 boards tested so far, and there are some pretty interesting results here with the 3900X. One of the more interesting set of results worth discussing includes the Gigabyte B550 Aorus Elite and B550 Aorus Pro. On paper, both of these boards feature the exact same VRM components, yet we see a seven degree difference. And that's quite a lot for boards featuring the exact same VRM, or at least the same components. There are a few reasons why the Aorus Pro runs cooler, and I think the key reason being the VRM layout. The Aorus Elite crams all of its inductors together very tightly, whereas the Pro spreads them out, significantly expanding their footprint on the PCB. It's also worth noting that neither board actively cools the inductors, so spacing them out across the PCB really helps with thermal dissipation. Gigabyte's also using higher quality thermal pads with the Pro, and the heat sinks are significantly better. Not only are we getting real finned heat sinks, but they also include a direct touch copper heat pipe that connects both banks. The end result is a much cooler running VRM. The Vision D does drop the finned heat sinks, but it keeps the same layout and the high quality thermal pads, and as a result, it runs just a degree hotter. Another interesting comparison can be made between the MSI B550 Gaming Edge Wi-Fi and the MSI B550 Gaming Carbon Wi-Fi. As we saw earlier in the video, these boards do feature different VRM designs, and the Gaming Carbon Wi-Fi is the more expensive model, presumably you're paying for what should be a better VRM. However, as we just saw, the Carbon runs quite a bit hotter than the Edge, and after retesting twice, only to receive the same results, I reached out to MSI, who ran their own tests and confirmed my findings. So that's a bit awkward. 
The Carbon isn't exactly bad when it comes to VR and performance, but it's also a pointless board given the edge is better and cheaper. Here are the Ryzen 9 3950X results for all the B550 boards tested so far. If you want to go over these results, then feel free to pause the video, but there's not much more for me to say here. And lastly, we have the Ryzen 9 3950X OC results. And as you can see, the $180 plus boards really step it up in terms of VR and performance. That said, relatively affordable boards such as the MSI B550-A Pro can still handle this overclock, so you don't need to spend up near $200. The B550 Aorus and Elite comparison is pretty crazy here, as the overclocked 3950X saw the Pro run 17 degrees cooler. That is an incredible difference. This just goes to show that the components aren't the be-all and end-all of a good VRM. The layout and design are just as important as is the cooling. So that's the bulk of my B550 VRM testing done. I will have a dedicated ITX roundup soon. I know a lot of you have been requesting that, so sit tight, it is coming. As for the higher end boards that we've looked at here, there's certainly no duds, but there are some boards I'd avoid as there are better value options. For example, there's nothing really wrong with the MSI B550 gaming carbon Wi-Fi, other than the price, but I'd avoid it as the gaming edge appears to have a better implemented VRM and it costs $30 less. I'd also avoid the ASRock B550 Tai Chi. It's way too expensive and there are better options for less. And it is a similar situation with the ASUS ROG Strix B550e Gaming. The F Gaming looks like the way to go if you want a high-end ASUS B550 motherboard. The MSI B550 Tomahawk is a nice quality board, but I'm really disappointed with the lack of connectivity on the IO panel and the strange choice to include a gigabit network connection alongside a 2.5 gigabit LAN connection. For this reason, I prefer the gaming edge, but still, I wish MSI included at least two more USB 3 ports on the O panel. Just three Type A ports isn't enough at this price point. Anyway, that is going to do it for this one. Hope you've enjoyed our extensive B550 VRM thermal testing. It was a lot of work and quite difficult to get all these boards in hand. Uh, yeah, it takes about a day to properly test each board. So we've done about 30 days worth of testing or we've invested that. Thankfully, it's not something you have to sit there and watch and put a lot of time and effort into like a 30 GPU or 30 game GPU benchmark type thing where you're sitting there testing the whole time. But still, a lot of work making sure that they're all working how they should be and you've got the sensors in the hot spots and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, quite a bit of effort went into this one. And of course, just getting the boards was very difficult. Uh, not just because we had companies such as ASRock who have blacklisted us and refused to send boards and half the time answer our emails. But, you know, ASUS, Gigabyte, MSI, they all played ball. But getting stock was difficult. So you guys have probably noticed that yourselves. But anyway, they've slowly come in. We've got all the boards. We've been able to test them. So yeah, great stuff. But again, a big, big shout out to our Patreon members because they really do. Uh, I know a bit of a cliche, people say this, but they really do make this content possible. I certainly cannot afford to go out and spend thousands of dollars on boards we can't get. So big thank you to everyone who supports the channel directly. And if you would like to check out our Patreon account, again, the link is in the video description. So go do that. You get some pretty cool perks in return. Tim and I do a show each month for the Patreon members live. So a live stream that we do. We have a, a private Discord chat, Discord server for Harbor Unbox members. That's a really cool community. Q&As, behind the scenes videos. Anyway, as I said, if you're interested, check it out. If not, perfectly fine. And I would like to just thank you for watching this video. Very much appreciate that. That's going to do it for this one. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll see you again next time.